If you're tired of spending hours grinding and studying Leeco to pass your technical interview, look no further because now there is a new app that allows you to completely cheat your way through any FANG interview. And the person who made this app has already been blacklisted by every major FANG company because he's used it and recorded the results from it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melky. I'm a senior machine learning software engineer over at Twitch, where I've been for the last four years. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about this app that has taken tech Twitter completely by storm, my thoughts on it. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to tell you if I think LeetCode is worth studying in 2025. Okay, so I first heard about this app when I was scrolling Twitter, as most of us do, and I saw this app that says uh, there's a dangerous app that helps you cheat on leak code style software engineering interviews without being detected. Don't use it. Please don't engage in cheating. It's morally repre reprehensible. Don't do it. I'll leave a link here just so you're aware what not to use and it says f leak code invisible ai for technical interviews of course it's not available for linux most people on linux are probably going to study this themselves but i digress so this got me kind of curious like oh that looks pretty neat and then i saw more tweets about it one from aiden by who said kind of insane there's an ai cheating software for leak code job interviews and it's the same post you can really recognize the design and this really piqued my curiosity, so I went ahead and found it. And the author, he is a 21-year-old, I'm Roy Lee, who created this app called interviewcoder.co. And as the bio here says, an invisible desktop application to help you pass your technical interviews. So if I click on interviewcoder.co and look at the page here, it looks exactly how those preview tweets look and even gives you a preview of how the application works. So you can see on this screen here, this is kind of the interview tab, I think using Google Meet. And then you have kind of this, I think meta Google interview leak code platform. And you can see all of these hidden tabs is basically the AI telling you what to use and even what to say. However, the real cool part comes with webcam monitoring and active tab detection. So you can see here, you can use the command plus arrow keys if you're on Mac to move the app over to your coding area. And you can see in this little demo here that this little pop-up is the actual interviewcoder.co. So you can see in the background, it's whatever interview platform uh, he's interviewing for. And you can see this little hover point is appearing on the screen. And you can also see here, active tab detection. So you can toggle visibility with uh, command B. So there it goes. It's, you can see it and you can toggle, toggle it off. And then if I scroll down, I actually also saw that I believe it works by simply taking screenshots. So you can see here, use command H to capture the problem. And so I think this is kind of the hidden secret how it, how it works. You command H, the actual problem that's in front of you, and then interviewcoder.co will then take that image pass it to an LLM or parse the image for the text of the actual problem, the actual leak code problem, and then it will send it to an LLM, which I think it uses something like whatever ChatGPT offers or Claude. Now, this is just an absolute Chad product, and this isn't the only one I've seen. There's a few of these kind of leak code cheating AI products that I've seen around. This one I think is like 60 bucks a month. There's others that I think are similar price. I don't really know them off the top of my head right now. But I think the the part that really got me kind of more engaged is this guy recorded himself taking a test with an Amazon recruiter, with an Amazon interviewer, technical problem. So if I pause it, you can see this prompt on the left side is the actual problem he's getting on Amazon's platform. And then here is interviewcoder.co, this uh, pop-up, this software that tells him exactly what to say, exactly what to write, and he just goes on to solve the problem. So you can see he's looking both ways and you can see his webcam is on. This is a Mac and when the webcam is on, this little thing shines green. Most of you people should probably know that if you're on a Mac or not. But you can see that he's just reading this off, probably just repeating exactly what he's saying, adding some comments because you want to always add comments when you, do, when you do a leak code problem. I don't know, I haven't done leak code problems in, in so long. And you can just see that it completely works. Uh, and again, the audio is muted, but the interview seems to be fairly impressed. And, and look, so he removed, he toggled visibility. So you can go back all the way here. Here's the app, right? And then he's going to toggle it to remove it. 
bang, it's gone. And that's, comp it's gone. That's it. And he continues the interview like so and passes. And you maybe ask yourself, okay, well, obviously the interviewer must know what's happening, but you'd be wrong because Roy himself actually got an email from Amazon that says, uh, Dear Columbia Center for Student Success and Intervention, which is the school Roy goes, there's his name. It basically says his performance was spectacular. Soon after, I received a link to a YouTube video created by Roy in which he showed himself using an invisible cheating tool to get an unfair and unimproved advantage during the interview process. So this is like, it comes full circle. He actually got an offer from Amazon because he used it so it actually worked and not only was amazon a place that wanted to give him an offer but you can see capital one thank you for taking the time to apply to the summer 2025 technical internship pro uh, program due to information obtained prior to onboarding we are unable to move forward with our offer of employment moving forward from meta as well hi roy Following up from a phone conversation to confirm your offer of employment at Meta has been rescinded effective immediately because this video kind of blew up in three weeks, accumulating 67,000 views. But really, the post that he has for Amazon has garnered way more attention. This has like, I think, 6.5 million views as it states right here. This has something around like 508,000 views. The Meta one has probably just as much. And so I think this is just absolutely mind-boggling i want to give kudos to roy for creating something that he truly believes in recording himself and proving that it works and again there, there is a cost here right like i'm pretty sure he's gonna be blacklisted from amazon and other uh, big tech fan companies because while this goes away while he has his offers rescinded from the three companies i mentioned earlier and other companies this probably gonna be recruiters that share this around, see this video shared around too. So yeah, I mean, he really rolled the dice and you kind of respect that from a entrepreneur like Roy. So good job, dude. Big, uh, big ups to you. But all of this really got me thinking, and I made this tweet, this product, this product got tech Twitter fighting each other and pissed off a fan company. So pissing off a fan company is already one pretty good achievement. Clap, clap, clap. The part I want to focus on is tech Twitter fighting each other and they fight each other and the two sides are pretty much do lead code because it's good and strengthens you and don't be a cheater versus cheat because no one likes lead code. It doesn't prove anything. It's a dumb made up way to filter candidates. And it's agreed upon a, through a few other people. Here's Dev saying grinding lead code is the single least important skill you can develop for finding a software job. And other people can queue in and agree, such as Dmitry Kovanikov. Couldn't agree more. When was the last time you saw the lead code problem at your job? This all leads me to thinking, why would anyone do lead code in 2025? And the simple answer, the straight up answer, the one that I personally subscribe to the most is get a job at Fang. For those who may be unfamiliar with Fang is, or I'll just put big tech, it's Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. But now, I mean, Microsoft, Uber, Lyft, a bunch of big tech companies, Airbnb, are totally Fang uh, level, equatal, whatever. It's just big tech companies because for big tech companies, the way to get in is to do lead code. They get such an influx of applicants that you can't really spend time doing like a take home interview or solve a bug on our, our open source library. Most of these don't even have open source libraries, but you get what I'm saying, like do an actual bug. They do, hey, here's a lead code problem. It's a medium hard, blah, blah, blah. Your recruiter could be a giant dick hole who hasn't gone late in a while. If he has in a bad mood, he's gonna fail you. Whatever, you know, there could be so many different factors that go into it. Lead code really isn't the best way to filter job candidates, right? Because in my experience, I've seen so many people who are lead code masters, literally like people who can solve any lead code problem. They can solve any tree traversal, graph traversal, solve anything with a linked list. You name it, they can do it because all they do is spend time lead coding. Now, lead coding as a puzzle solver, like a Sudoku brain thing is fine. If you have some amount of time in a day, like 45 minutes to an hour, and you just want to like get a nice puzzle solved and you don't want to do a crossword or something like your nanny does, go ahead and do a lead code problem. That's fine, right? But to think that lead code makes you fundamentally a better software engineer is a false statement. And going back to Fang, the reason why they do this is that's really the only cheap way to filter the flood of applicants they get through their application portals. And so the logical next question is, why do people want to get a job at Fang or big tech? 
And the answer is simple. It's money. Big tank, big tech fan companies pay the most. They pay a ridiculous amount of money. It's something that I've talked about plenty of times on my stream and over uh, on my YouTube as well. And a lot of people have talked about it too. Here with Amazon, Microsoft, and Nordstrom. I'm going to replace Nordstrom with something like Apple. You can see here, let's say uh, mid-level is ICT3 at Apple, SDE2 at Amazon, and I believe it's SDE2 at Microsoft. So at Microsoft, you'd be making around $200,000 total compensation. At Amazon, it's about 280,000 uh, total compensation. And at Apple, it's about 234. So it does range, but the fact that like mid-level engineers who typically get mid-level after junior one to two years after graduating. So you graduate, you become a junior, one to two years later, you become a mid-level. To make over 200K is pretty like insane, right? And companies like OpenAI, right? which has boomed in the last just a few years, pays way more, 357000 right? If we add a company that is known to pay a lot, like Netflix, right? Netflix Engineer 2, mid-level, pays 342 So even there, there's ranges between companies that pay you from like a Microsoft, Apple, Amazon level to an OpenAI, Netflix, and who knows what other companies are paying as well. These big tech, big tech companies are getting so much funding. So really, the way I see it is if you want to get a job at Fang, you have to do lead code. It's it's like you can't avoid it, right? That's why people watch YouTube channels that offer solutions to YouTube uh, to lead code problems. That's why people hire coaches and take courses specifically to learn lead code because it is the best known way to get a job at these big tech fang companies. Now, if you don't want to work at big tech fang, that is an entirely different story, right? If you don't want to work at big tech, you probably don't need to lead code. And it doesn't mean that you won't get as much money. You could probably make just as much or even more at a big tech company or a big different tech company. But the main difference will probably be a take home style interview question or the best yet, an actual problem with a team member, like an engineer, on a day-to-day -day task. So something like my personal favorite approach to interviewing is you interview with an engineer that would be on your team or a sister team, and he pulls off one of his current Jira tickets or something he completed maybe a week or a sprint ago, and he sits down with you, shows you kind of example code ask you how would you solve this with this current context and current knowledge and you work together to solve it i think that is the absolute best peak way to interview someone for a job in a tech company but obviously this kind of investment these big big tech companies cannot afford because of, they get like thousands of thousand applications every single day especially with the current state of layoffs i mean i haven't looked at this in a while but with current layoffs and just the the economic sense i mean getting a job right now is pretty pretty fretting right there's always layoffs happening every time you open up tech twitter open up the news there seems to be a layoff happening uh every single day so yeah people are desperate to get jobs in big tech and so i really don't think leco is going to go anywhere i think it's a necessarily evil i think the reward is definitely something to think about and consider if that's something you want to do but again working in big tech has its pros and cons just like not working at big tech just like Lee code, they all have their own pros and cons, and you really have to decide what you want to do. Can you grind Lee code maybe for a month or two and get a good interview, everything rolls your way and succeed and get a job at Fang? Yes, for sure. But a lot of things have to go your way. Do you want to take the risk at cheating where you probably don't have to put a lot of effort, like a month or two in studying a bunch of Lee code questions and hoping that the one you get for your interview is one of these? We can just cheat. Sure, you can do that. You may succeed. However, if you get caught, there's probably going to be some serious repercussions, like being completely blacklisted. So my end of thoughts for people here is lead code sucks ass and it does not prove you're a good engineer. What lead code does do is prove that you're good at studying for big tech fang interviews. That's pretty much it. Lead code teaches you how to do lead code. That's pretty much fundamentally it. It may be also a good way to get familiar with different data structures, but just like the individuals and engineers here have also stated, it's very rare you see the exact lead code style problem at your job. You see more people who've been working for a long time know the sheer difference between like a lead code style, like a linked list thing, versus something you'd see pop up like from a client, from your backend, from a bug, 
from some infrastructure problem and uh, they are vastly different. So I wanna leave he, leave this with you guys. What do you think? Are you a fan of LeetCode? Do you do LeetCode? Am I wrong here? What do you think? And what do you think of interviewcoder.co? Is this something you think you'd be using? Is, do you think it's a waste of time? Do you think it's unfair and unethical to use this? And if you were an interview, how would you feel if you notice someone cheating in a interview for the company you work at? Let me know in the comment section down below as always. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.